Uh, you wrote about the WWE WWE creative hierarchy at this point. Uh, and you also ended it by saying Vince is kind of n- not there right now, but that could change at any point. But it is Triple H with Bruce Pritchard as, as the right hand. That's the situation right now. Yeah. Yeah. Vince is out right now. Um, how long that will be? I mean, how many times have we heard that before? And, and you know, things change. So I never count that out, even though, I mean, Vince does not have, um, you know, absolute power like he, he had before. But he's still the number one guy on that side. And, um, you know, how long that will be, you know, what the politics really are. You know, a lot of people, you know, um, you know, saw that quote by Ari Emanuel yesterday about how, you know, kind of blaming Vince for the stock price, yeah. which is really down, um, as the first chink in the armor of like, hey, maybe we got him because at the beginning it was important to have Vince McMahon, but, you know, in time, you know, he's 78 years old and 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 blah, blah, blah. And maybe that's, it was, I, I, I was surprised he said it. I, I mean, everyone was. So I don't know what this all means, but, you know, it's going to be, um, it will be interesting. I, I mean, you know, he certainly was all, you know, when, when they made the deal, you know, that, that, you know, Vince is the man in charge, like Dane is the man in charge of UFC. So we did have a question and, 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 and a higher ranked than Dana too, much higher ranked in the company. Yeah. Hierarchy. Like, I don't think Dana cares. I really don't. But if it was me and I was Dana and I built this company from scratch, that's more profitable than the one Vince built, which was, you know, not quite handed to him, but kind of handed to him in a, in a, in an, in an industry that was a very, very popular industry for a hundred years, as opposed to an industry that didn't even exist or was at such an incredibly low level. You know, I would go like, you know, my qualifications here and what I have results that I've given, I should be equal to Vince, you know, and, and maybe even ahead, but equal. Yeah. And, and, but I, I, I don't sense that he cares. So it's not an issue. So you already you kind of answered the first part of Thomas's question, but he added um, he 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 also wrote that there was a PW Insider report which stated that Triple H had been knighted by Endeavor when it comes to WWE creative. And he wonders if Endeavor sees that Triple H has had a lot of creative and financial excess while Vince is much more of a risk. And it almost feels like Vince's role in TKO has effectively been reduced to that of a figurehead. Time will tell, you know, um, you know, maybe, I mean, Nick Khan's running the business. Paul Levesque is running the creative. So, um, and Vince is 78 years old. But, but I, but I guess the question, and this is what I was thinking too, is, is the reason why Vince has stepped away his call or their call um i you know i can't say 100 percent yeah um, i think that's the the question that i mean i mean i would be more inclined to say their call but but the thing is is that they made it very clear and everyone did that it's vince's call you know what i mean mm-hmm you know, that they're not going to get involved in that. And maybe they will, and maybe they won't. I know with UFC, they didn't. You know, it's not like they're out there matchmaking and they haven't, like, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, they they haven't. I mean, the thing Dana said was that, like, you know, they've never, you know, they'll do the business stuff, but they've never done anything like, you know, you got to make this match. You know, even if you don't like this guy, you got to make this match. He said that that's never happened. So, you know, I mean, could it, could that... Could that be yes? Based on what they said, it would be a no because Ari said that if there's a disagreement between me and Vince, and it's on the wrestling side, it goes with Vince mm-hmm. because he's the one with the experience at it. And he is, you know, even though Ari is on top, Vince is the one who makes all the wrestling calls if there's a, if there's like a, a debate mm-hmm. on a direction. So based on that, it would be Vince. So uh, our our friend John Quinn uh, had more of a stock question, and I kind of asked you this uh, in text the other day about. Um, we know he said he wrote, "We know that all of Vince's ability to sell was already common knowledge, and if he chooses to sell as a sixteen percent ish owner, yes. he will have to submit a public 
trading plan like many executives do. Yes. So given this, any thoughts on the motivation of Ari calling Vince out as one of the three reasons for the stock issues? Is there any strife or is he trying to get ahead of some other news or was this just talking head stuff? I don't know. I mean, the other thing that you got to think about is what about what about the investigation events? Right. You know, I mean, there's there is I mean, they are investigating him and it's been kept very quiet what's going on. But I would think Ari would know and maybe there's something there, you know. I, you know, I don't have a good I don't have a good answer. I only have speculation. Um, but Vince could sell enough of the stock to make the stock price go down the reality is is the stock price is 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 you know for what for you know there's no way to say that this stock price is since the merger is has been very unsuccessful now it may be a short-term thing there's a part of me that thinks it is a short-term thing they overreact i think they totally overreacted to the pfl um saudi arabia deal you know thinking that oh my god now ufc is gonna have to compete with the saudis you know for fighters and blah 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 and their monopoly is going to be over and and that and then the other one was, is, uh, you know, the reaction to the SmackDown deal. And the SmackDown deal was a negative, no matter how you say it, because number one, it's not the money that, the, that they expected that they would get. And, and that Nick Khan publicly stated that they were going to get. Yeah. Well, you, as you know, that, that didn't help Nick in a lot of places, too. Yeah. But, but um, you know, it wasn't the money that they expected. But even more, it's like, even if the money was equal... They take a major hit in October when it comes to exposure because that SmackDown, you know, it's doing 2.3 million viewers, um, you know, and doing 0.6, you know, 0.6s and up, you know, that's going to go down minimum of, of you know, uh, 22%, probably closer to 30%, maybe more, unless um, maybe, maybe, you know, getting on a better night will help a little bit of that, but it's going down. You know, it's like they're not doing it's 100 percent that they're going to have fewer viewers um, on USA Network than they have on Fox. That's just that's, that's just going to be that way unless somehow they just freaking catch fire. like a <laughs> business. You know, I mean, it, it could happen. They they have to a degree, you know, if they have Dwayne on every week or something, which which isn't going to happen. But, and but even if they had him on every week, it would it, would, it, I, it, it wouldn't keep them hot. Just by no, 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 not 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 at this point. No, no. Uh, and then what did you think about him talking about moving nights as flexibility for raw? And that's been talked about for a long time. I, I would just assume that it would have to take a lot of money for them to move off of Monday. It's up to the station, you know, um, it's up to who's willing to pay him the money and what night that they're free. They're, they're not the ones making those calls. The station's going to make those calls. I, it's really interesting to me because, because again, Smack, you know what? When SmackDown going to go? You know, SmackDown going to move to Wednesday. SmackDown going to. I mean, like if you really look at it, um, um, if if it goes to USA, and you know the way if it goes to USA, I think that the way to do it would probably be Monday Raw, Tuesday SmackDown, Wednesday NXT. Mm -hmm. That'd probably be the best way to do it. Um, does AEW then move to Thursday, or does AEW just stay on Wednesday? Because third, you know, before they couldn't move to Thursday because of basketball. But now that they could be on either TBS or TNT, um, there's more flexibility in the AEW dates than there were before. What would hurt them more, do you think, though? NXT or basketball? NXT hurts more than basketball. I think we've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, last thing, and I just thought this was kind of a funny thing, is our, uh, Ari and the uh, the CAA guy, Brian Lord, are kind of oh my God. feuding in, in public uh, about oh, oh, yeah. Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. And the uh, Lord, because Ari basically said they 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 knew everything that Harvey was doing. They covered it up. Mm -hmm. We have morals. That was his comment. Was we have yeah, morals? Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then they the, quickly go, okay, but who are who, who did you who did you just uh, you know hire to run run this company? You have morals, Vince McMahon and Dana White. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was yeah. funny. It's also interesting that that uh, UFC made the deal with Saudi Arabia this week. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, you know, if you were following Ari, he had mentioned a couple times that, you know, we pulled out and yeah, everyone else going. went back. And so, you know, it's probably smart for us to go back as well. He, It seemed like he was a little regretful for 
being ahead of that. Yeah, I think he felt that he misjudged the situation, kind of like Vince felt he misjudged the situation when he when he stepped down. You know, you think that like, you know what? If I just because Vince's thing was is, you know what? If I just waited it out, it would have gone away, like everything else, every other problem that that happens. I didn't wait it out. These guys, you know, family members talked me out of um, staying. You know that I was a hindrance, and he didn't want to be the hindrance or whatever. But I could have stayed, and and you know we saw how that played out. But yeah, Ari was you know all gung ho about you know morals and everything before, and then it's kind of like well, you know it's like everyone else. You know, I mean, pops into my head Mick Foley. After, it's like such a terrible analogy, but here we go. Uh, Mick Foley after the 97 Survivor Series, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, Mick Foley was like, how can I work for this guy? Right. You know, he went home, he quit or whatever. He didn't quit, but he went home. He wouldn't come back. And then all of a sudden it's like three weeks later, it's like everybody else went back. <laughs> Brett's Brett's got a, a two point eight million dollar year deal. Yeah. What am I sitting at home for? What principle is this? So he came back. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's uh, yeah, I forgot about that one. That that one's. That that one is is a good one. Uh, so Andrew, in our hypothetical moving of, of dynamite, uh, Thursday night football would be an issue for for dynamite. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yes, that'd be a major issue in 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 the decision making process. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.